up friends? How are ya? Welcome back to my channel for the second ever installment of a cook with me where I would love to actually make this a series. I like make up a recipe, don't follow a recipe, just kind of riff on something and also just talk about whatever. Almost not really like a Q&A but just kind of the things on my heart and on my mind. I have updates I want to give y'all and also answer some questions that I've been getting a lot of especially about my upcoming plans and nomad life and all that kind of stuff. And then I've also just had some random reflective thoughts about life in general, my life. And so I figure let's just hang out, make another little meal and chat. If we start doing this often, I think it'd be really fun if y'all also cook something while you watch these and then we can cook together and eat together and tag me and stories on Instagram if that ends up happening. That would be so fulfilling for me. I also just love that this encourages me to get back to something that I used to love to do, which is just like makeup recipes. I did that for a job for a while for a network called Tastemade, and then I really fell out of it. And it's so fun to just make something up. Um, so what I'm gonna be doing today, is I got these rice noodles, which are safely gluten-free and they're stir fry rice noodles. And I wanna kind of do like a red curry stir fry noodle situation. I'm not supposed to have coconut, so I can't have a lot of curry dishes. I just got red curry paste. And then I also got dairy-free cream. This has coconut oil, which I can do, but no coconut milk. And then I figured I could stir it with some veggies. I got red bell pepper, got mushrooms. I got garlic, ginger, lime, basil, cilantro. And then as my protein, I actually am gonna do just egg, which is kind of like pad thai inspired, I guess. You have scrambled egg in your pad thai, but I just wanna do that as my protein on top of this. So I'm gonna get prepping, cutting, and then let's, let's catch up. First things first, something I've just noticed about myself in this last little bit, this last little season, is I have been so sensitive and it's frustrating to feel hy hypersensitive about things. I think for me, it's been a mix of the last two months now at this point, I've been very emotionally draining. I would even say traumatic, but then also physically draining. And I think that that manifests itself emotionally for me a lot. And I'm like, I need to learn how to change how I do things or grow thicker skin. I don't know, I think I go through seasons of having thicker skin than I have right now. I think it's okay to be sensitive to some things because it means you care and you have conscience, but like there's a healthy balance with everything and I am far too far in one direction right now. I would say my mental health right now is not the healthiest that it has been. Um, okay, I think this video is coming out right after my New York vlogs where I tried alcohol for the first time. And I think a lot of people hadn't known a lot about my alcohol journey so far. So I wanna give a little recap on why I haven't had a sip of alcohol my whole life until 25, and then why I decided to go ahead and try a sip. I just was never interested in alcohol. There's some issues in my extended family with alcohol and just like watching that it's been a deterrent for me. I'm like, I don't, I wanna have more control over my life, I think, than that. Um, also, being celiac, there's a lot of alcohol that's not safely gluten-free. It's expensive. I'm much more of a foodie. I would rather spend my money on trying more food than trying drinks. And then also, my biggest fear in life is people getting sick. And I know that like I won't get sick if I'm responsible, but I just associate it. I'm like, if I'm in an area where people are drinking, someone might drink too much, then they might get sick and that just is scary for me. It was my my life dream to go to a Michelin star restaurant in New York City. So I had told my mom a while ago, she's always trying to get me to drink, which is so funny. I love her to death, but she's like, come on, loosen up a little, have a drink. And I'm like, if my dream comes true, that I get to go to a Michelin star restaurant, I will try very nice alcohol, whether it's wine or champagne or whatever, I'll figure that out later. Um, and that finally happened. I got to go to a Michelin star restaurant, which was so much fun. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I am going to take a drink. I'd be lying if I said there wasn't a little part of my mind that thought like, ooh, look at me. I am stronger than some people because I've held off on this temptation for so long, which is stupid. That's just like, not a cool mindset at all. And so I was kind of of the mindset, if I try something I'd never tried before, it will help me let go of these perfectionist tendencies and honestly some of my own ego, which is interesting and I'm thankful that I tried it. I will say I hated the taste. <laughs> 
is not at all enjoyable. I tried white wine, red wine, champagne, and I hated all of it. It was so bad. So I would probably, not for a long time, be trying that again because it just wasn't enjoyable. I did try also a sip of a margarita, which I thought I'd like, but it was so smoky. I think it was a smoky tequila. Hated that too. And then I tried a pineapple martini. And that I actually was like, this is tolerable. But to me, it kind of just tastes like pineapple juice went a little bit bad. And I would probably just enjoy regular pineapple juice more than this. And it was literally like $22 or something ridiculous like that. Another something that is like kind of along the same lines that I realized about human nature in general, I don't know if it's our society or if it's just human nature, is I feel like we need to normalize the concept of changing our mind as humans. I'm guilty of this too. Kind of be like, oh no, 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 you said. You said once that you were gonna do blank and now you're doing something else. Like, it feels like a weird thing. I feel like changing your mind is humbling and is growth. And it's cool to like say you're gonna do something and stick to it. I think that's awesome. But I feel like our tolerance to allowing people to change their mind is too low as a society. And I think it's really cool to be like, yeah, I thought I wanted to do that, tried it, changed my mind. I have a lot more thoughts and things to tell you, but I think let's hop on over to the stove real quick. What I'm gonna do is saute the mushrooms, the bell peppers, the garlic, the ginger together. And then I'm gonna add in curry paste and cream, create a little sauce. And then I have already cooked some noodles, but they're like halfway there. Add those in, cook those. And while I'm doing all that, also fry up some just egg. So let's do the rest of that little cook and then we'll be back to assemble, eat, and continue to chat. Mm -hmm. we're going to dress this. Um, I had to scramble the patty because someone else came to the door to do something else with the water heater and I burned it. So a little bit, a little bit more soy sauce and we're gonna get our greens in with some herbs. So I have some cilantro. I feel like this could be really good with some broccolini stir fried in as well. We have some basil, a squeeze of lime and there we have it. Ta-da! That was actually so easy and quick. I sampled a little noodle, it was creamy and good, but I'm excited to try it all together. I'm gonna eat this before I clean up because I want to eat it hot. I'll clean up later. So let's go sit down and have a meal together and keep chatting about life. What do you say? Okay, let's give this a little taste. I don't know if y'all can hear, it sounds like rushing water in the background. I don't know what they did to my water heater, but now it's making new noises. So I'm sorry if you can hear that. Wait, I'm not gonna lie, this is a lot better than I was expecting, but it's so simple and you got all the main categories. We got our grain, we got our veggies, we got our protein. That took me, well, really like 15 minutes. Hopefully it was easy enough to follow along and make something similar if you would like. Where were we? I feel like I should answer some of the questions I had about nomad living. I don't know if we can necessarily even call it nomad living because the majority of the time I'll be in Texas, staying between Airbnbs and Saunders and VRBOs. So I'm gonna like have my own full apartment always or home always. A lot of people wanted to know what I do with my stuff. And I'm actually really excited about my plan with my stuff. So I got an official storage unit for 90 bucks a month, a 10 by 20. And I'll be moving all my big furniture into that because I love all my furniture and I will be keeping it to furnish a house when I buy a house, probably also buying more because I'm sure it'll be more than my one bedroom apartment. And I'm also keeping the storage unit that I had set up here at my apartment and I'm transferring it to Jacqueline's lease since my sister lives here and I'll be paying her because it'll be going through her lease to still have access to it. And I'm gonna turn that into my closet and also have like my grab and go things. So I bought some clothing racks 
and I'll be hanging all of my wardrobe in that so I can come switch out pieces really easily because the big storage unit will be moved by movers. That'll be boxes. Who knows what I'll be able to like realistically get to. So I'm kind of thinking whatever goes in the main big storage unit, I just won't touch until I move into a house and things I might need to access. I'm going to put in the small storage unit here because I can access it at any point easily. So I'll be hanging my clothes and clothing racks in there and turn it basically into like a giant walk-in closet. And then I'm also going to get plastic bins of things like shoes. And then also things I just might want to access, like some kitchen stuff, some beauty things. Like I have refills of things that I'll probably want to replenish. And so I'm going to turn that into my little grab and go station. I bought like basically hanging wardrobe bags for my clothes. So I'm going to have three hanging wardrobe bags that I take place to place. All my clothes will already be on hangers. I'll be able to hang up my clothes unzip it from the bag and when it's time to go to the next place rezip the bag take my clothes off and i won't have to like unpack pack anything which will be very handy and nice and then if the seasons change if i'm still doing this in the spring which i don't expect to yeah but who knows you know if the seasons change i can go switch up my winter stuff for my spring stuff so that's kind of what i'm thinking max will be coming along with me to every single like long-term spot i will be staying i have one three-day trip planned after i move out of here that he'll be with my parents but other than that, everything November up until February that I have booked, he'll be coming with me. And it's actually really sweet because he just did a little road trip with my mom and dad, bringing him back here to Austin. And my mom was like, he loves the car. And I was like, I know. He either stands on the center console and watches everything. He has a harness, so he's like safely harnessed in or naps or just like looks out the window and loves it. And I told her, I was like, good thing that he loves it because he'll be thriving in the next few months. And I'm excited to go on little adventures with him. I am kind of glad that the last house fell through, the one I really, really wanted, and that I'm doing this instead for a couple reasons. At the time, I was only really able to put down like 10% on the houses I was looking at, and that's why I lost out on that one house. Um, so I'm going to be able to save for two more quarters, which I think will help me actually be able to get a house I like a lot easier if I can put down more than 10%. Um, so that's one reason I'm excited. And then also, I am truly a little bit nervous about the Austin housing market. It has just exploded so quickly, and now it's kind of hitting a lull, which is great as a buyer, but I also don't know if we're gonna be in a correction or not and if so if it would be like i should hold off a little bit longer because maybe i'll buy a house here and over the next couple of years it'll drop to here i just don't know there's no way to know i've talked to a lot of people and had mixed reviews and opinions so i think it's smart for me to just sit and watch the market a little bit and see what happens i'm just ner i'm just nervous about what it will do but i know it's the next step that i want to do is is own something so I think it's gonna be good for me to not rush into that and to watch what happens a little bit longer and maybe, you know, housing will continue to drop. I simply don't know, but I am a little bit nervous about it. So I'm just gonna like kind of keep an eye on it and try to make the wisest decision and I'm gonna normalize changing my mind. So if, you know, things change in the market that I couldn't predict or couldn't see coming, I might decide, you know what, now is actually not the time to buy. I'm gonna sign another year lease, rent for another year and reassess at the end of that lease. Who knows? So out of my control. All of life is out of your control, really. Um, so I am leaving for a solo trip here pretty soon. I'm finally getting to do that houseboat in Washington that I'm so excited about. I had to cancel it because I got COVID and I rescheduled it because they wouldn't actually let me cancel it. They would only let me reschedule it. But I'm really excited because I think it'll be a good chance for me to unplug and rest. I mentioned this in my New York vlog. I've realized a lot of my stress is mental and emotional and not as much like activity based. I have a pretty high capacity for doing activities, but I just put a lot of pressure on myself, which makes me stressed, which causes flares in terms of my health. So for me, I've noticed that taking trips is actually really good for my stress because it forces me to first spend less time on the internet, but also all of my community was pretty much in Austin or surrounding areas, which is awesome and I love it so much. But then I put the pressure on myself that I wanna to try to see everyone all the time. And I put a lot of social pressure on myself and that's where I get fatigued is trying to maintain so many social plans. So for me, I think travel has been healthy and restful because I'm incapable of making social plans and I can only do things on my own terms. I can do leisure activities by myself, go sightseeing, try new foods, that type of stuff. And then when I'm in town, be like all in and spend time with the people I love instead of that being consistent and my tank kind of draining in terms of, you know, my social tank. Everybody's different, especially people with different chronic illnesses. Some people might think that travel and like not being in your own bed and things like that is draining and that's 
totally understandable and acceptable. But for me, I found that it's a good break from the pressures I put on myself in my day-to-day -day life. And it's actually helped me feel more like rested and whole. And so I'm excited for the houseboat vlog because I don't think that there's a lot I can really like try to cram in. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. So I think it'll be an even more extreme version of travel for me to where it's like, I just am gonna sit in this beautiful area, maybe take a walk around nature and cook at home and you know, enjoy, read, nap, do those types of things. And so I think that that will be really healing for me as well. And then I'm going from there to LA because my church has a conference in LA. Jordy has a show in LA. And so I'll be spending a little bit of time there as well and hopefully have a better experience than last time. But there's like several good reasons that I wanna be there. So I think it'll be a fun little trip of like resting and then good memories in LA, seeing a lot of my church people at once and then um, seeing Jordy perform. I think it will be a really good mix, a lot of things for myself, which will be awesome. I had a last couple little thoughts. I wrote them down so I wouldn't forget them. In terms, I guess this kind of relates to like traveling and doing what I want right now. I realize that there's kind of, not everybody's like this. This is just almost like a societal expectation. I think that like your first half of your 20s, you're just figuring it out a lot of the time. Like the average 20 to 25 year old is like figuring out where they wanna live, what they wanna do for work, dating, doing all that. And then it seems to be generally the cultural norm that the second half of your 20s, you settle down, you get married, you're kind of a little more sure of your career. Yet again, I wanna say, it doesn't have to be that way. These are just things that I've noticed. And I think I tried to do the second half of my 20s in the first half. At 20, I got engaged. 21, I got married. I found my job, which is this, which by the way, I love. Found what I thought was gonna be my forever home. And then like everything flipped. So I think I lived the second half of my 20s in the first half. Now I'm 25. 25 was like the shifting point. And I think I now need to live my first half of my 20s and my second half, which is just like figuring it the heck out. Being okay with not having things be for sure. I feel like I need to stress so many times that you do not have to do certain things by certain ages at all. It's just like the pressure that I put on myself yet again. And speaking of putting pressure on myself, I was having a conversation with someone about how like, I've kind of been physically paying for the emotional stress of the last couple months and how my body just like makes me slow down and stop. And she said, quote, it's cool that your body sets boundaries for you that ensure you slow down. And I was like, that's really a refreshing way to reframe that because I've been pretty bad at setting boundaries for myself over my life. It was just a more loving way to frame my body's tolerance for me when she said that to me. So I appreciated that as well. Last little random thought that I had about me <laughs> in my life, maybe someone will relate to this, maybe they won't, is I have so many things in my life that are just absolutely incredible. I have my dream job, this is my dream job. I get to wake up and decide what sounds fun and then film it for a living. I get to connect with people about meaningful things as a living. I get to travel and you know work from wherever as a living. I have an amazing family. I don't take them for granted at all. Like I have just extremely wonderful things about my life, but then at the same time, I've gone through like pretty extremely difficult things for my age from divorce and infidelity and just like, scary, shocking legal things and chronic illness, lupus. The average life, if this is the baseline, has a couple things here, a couple things here, you know, a couple things above average, a couple things below average, but I kind of feel like I have some things way up here and some things way down here. And I think it causes me to kind of just dissociate from all of it. The peaks and the valleys are so high and so low that if I were to ride those, I, it would just be such a crazy roller coaster. That's just something I've noticed about myself is I, I force myself to stay pretty baseline because there are some things way up here and there are some things way down there. I don't know, that was just a very random thought I had one time in the middle of a nap or something. And sometimes my most random thoughts, people are like, I feel the same way. And that was really helpful to hear someone else say it out loud. Let me know if you'd like this to be like a recurring thing. Maybe once or twice a month we create something new together in the kitchen and catch up and talk about all of our crazy little random thoughts and answer some things that I see coming through as questions pretty often and just have a good little lunch break together. I, I think it would be really fun. So I'm open to your thoughts. I love you. Thank you for spending the day with me. And I will see you in some fun vlogs here very soon. Bye. So give me a sign. Give me a sign. Oh, give me a sign. Baby, give me a sign Just give me one more Talking to you talking to Here we go again Staying up all night To see if you've been texting me Where do we go from here?